You can't run a uniform bead yet. There's no point in trying to do lap joints, T joints, and things like that until you can run a uniform bead. So this uses only a little bit of material and you can use as thin as 11 gauge with the same settings that I'm using here today and a 115 volt MIG welder if that's all you got. Let's do it. We are going to be doing both pulling and pushing today. The key is to not get carried away with the angle. I've tested a whole bunch of these welds with both pushing and pulling and the key is to only use a slight push and a slight pull or a dead nuts 90 degree angle. I think a lot of the time when people are adamant that you should only push, they're talking about spray transfer. This is short circuit MIG. A slight pull angle works great. I'm using the recommended settings here for 11 gauge steel on this prime weld machine. Actually I'm using 3 16 metal here. I have done this same exercise with 11 gauge. Works just fine as long as you cool it off every three or four beads for a couple of minutes. It's a very inexpensive way to get a whole lot of practice. I don't think there's any better practice than this when you're learning. And when you are learning, sometimes it helps to lower the wire feed speed just a little bit. It kind of slows everything down. I'm going to drop it down to 200 here. Because there's no fillet weld or there's no groove weld, there's no place for the metal to bite. So it makes sense since we're just welding on a bead on a plate, turn the wire feed speed down a little bit, slow everything down a little bit so we can concentrate on that puddle. Concentrate on keeping a short stick out. Concentrate on keeping the gun angle the same. Concentrate on our movement, on moving that torch in steady, smooth increments. Concentrate on having a steady hand. There are some differences in pushing and pulling. and One difference I always see is a little bit more spatter with a push angle. Doesn't mean it's a bad thing, just an observation. Another observation that I notice when I'm welding is that when I pull, I can see the puddle better usually. And when I push, I can see where I'm going better. I can see the weld seam better. So there's a trade-off. Sometimes you have to do each. Sometimes your head is up in a box somewhere and you have to weld toward yourself or you have to weld away from yourself and there's no choice. So saying you should never push or you should never pull is kind of silly in my opinion because I've had to do both. No choice. While you're doing an exercise like this, because this is a scrap piece and it's going to go in the scrap bin, experiment. I dropped the wire feed speed down even lower to 173. It's like I entered a time machine here. It really slowed things down. But that could be a benefit. Being able to slow things down helps in learning a lot of different things if you think about it. Whether it's learning to drive a car, learning to play guitar, learning to swing a golf club, learning to do whatever, slowing things down can help to begin with. I mentioned keeping a short stick out earlier. Let's take a look at is stick out all that important? I'm going to run two beads here. The first one with a really long stick out. And look at this and listen to this. It seems to exaggerate everything that could go wrong. I'm intermittently kind of losing the ground and that long stick out exaggerates that. But holding a good tight stick out makes everything go so much better. You actually get more amperage this way. A long stick out totally changes the arc characteristics and it can make a weld pile up. You see that bottom weld all piled up there? I'm still welding at that fairly low wire feed speed of 173 inches a minute. And the machine is reading out anywhere from 110 to 115 on the amperage. When I see an amperage readout on a MIG welder, I automatically compare it to a 1 8 And that would actually get the job done here on this 3 16 thick plate with a 1 8 might be a little on the cold side, but it would get the job done. So there are some similarities in MIG welding and stick welding if you're looking at the amperage readout. It's not the same. It's apples and oranges because with, with a stick welder, with 7018, you have flux. So you have some chemistry going on that, that aids in fusion and things like that. But it's just a reference point. I have videos doing the same skill exercises using 7018 and I think it's one of the best things you can do for any stick rod, MIG welding, TIG welding, you name it, before you waste a bunch of metal and burn up a bunch of metal doing T-joints and lap joints. If you haven't done this exercise with either one of those processes yet, you can be just wasting a lot of metal. 
I personally think welding schools could save a lot of money in doing this exercise with 11 gauge steel. Because steel is sold mainly by weight, they could save half the money instead of using quarter inch. They could save half the money by using 11 gauge. Start the student out on this exercise on 11 gauge. Keep them on it until they can run a uniform bead. Then increase the thickness to quarter inch or whatever. Could also be a teaching opportunity to show the limitations of a 115 volt MIG welder when they get up to the thick metal. And at the same time, teach them the capabilities of a 115 volt MIG welder in case they ever want to go out on their own. Short circuit MIG has lots of limitations. There are a lot of people out there that don't seem to recognize the limitations and they'll use it where it shouldn't be used. And one of the main limitations is welding downhill vertical over hot rolled mill scale. Don't do it. Clean the metal to clean bright metal and don't use a 115 volt MIG welder anywhere where if the weld will break, somebody will get hurt. But we're talking about practice here, not critical welds. And for practice, if a 115 volt MIG welder is all you got in your garage and you want to practice and get better, you can do it. What you have to recognize is that when you get to thicker metal, like 3 eighths of an inch, half inch and thicker, you're going to need an industrial machine. You're going to need something with 250, 300 or more amps. But the techniques that you perfect and learn here using a small MIG welder will carry over. You just need to educate yourself on the difference between short circuit MIG, spray transfer, and pulse spray. If you're a beginner, you're thinking about a 115 volt MIG or you already have one, you're probably only thinking about short circuit transfer using either 7525 argon CO2 or pure CO2. Both work fine. If you think this little skill exercise would help you and you want to try it, just get yourself some 11 gauge, use the same settings that I listed here, do it with intention, watch this video, weld, watch the video, weld, I think you'll get better. The welder I use in this video is a Prime Weld MIG 180. It's a dual voltage welder, which means it can run off 115 or 230 volt. I ran off 115 volt for this video. I've done several videos using this welder, and I'll show you a couple of them here in just a second. You can learn more about it at weldmonger.com. Thanks for watching.